All righty. The new. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode 110 of the Nooner. We uh, took a little hiatus uh, last week. Thank you for the like, the uh, eventual favor, the restream. Nice to see you, buddy. Oh, let me just adjust that. How are things out there in Beetle Country, Liverpool? What's the weather like this time of year, Bill? So this is the Nooner. Every weekday, for the most part, Monday through Friday, Pacific Standard Time, I'm dropping in here at 12 o'clock noon Pacific, delivering some noontime nuggets about either sales, business, and or life. And I am your host. My name is David Bradley. Three things you're going to want to know about me. Number one, actually four. Four key things, okay? The first one is why the Nooner exists. Midday. I want to drop a little bit of motivation on you that you can use to take into the rest of your day. It's 12 o'clock noon on the West Coast, 3 p.m. on the East Coast, well into the evening now over in uh, jolly old England, so this will be fuel for tomorrow. But the purpose of this is it, we, you need fuel for your body, I'm giving you fuel for your brain. So thank you guys for being here, appreciate you tuning in, thanks in advance for the favorites and the restreams. Make sure to follow me here and over on the Twitter, at David R. Bradley. Um, and I'm coming to you every weekday. So who am I? Who's the guy to deliver fuel for your brain that you can take with you? Um, eight o'clock over there on the, uh, jolly old England. Who am I? Well, so I'm a sales and marketing manager with Grant Cardone. Tomorrow we'll make five years in a row with Cardone Training Technologies. And tomorrow's going to be a good day for me. Uh, what do we do at our company? We help companies, businesses, large and small, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, you name it, increase production, usually to the tune of 15 to 30 percent, simply by helping them find and then handle missed opportunities. So think about your business. If you would like some help with production, profitability, and or satisfaction, I can get you there using a few, uh, few very specific tools. 75% of what we do in our company is 100% free. So I'm happy to have a short conversation with you to see if there's some opportunity for us to partner up. 310-777-0352. Uh, you can email me, david at grantcardone.com. Uh, two other things on me, uh, real quick. Number one, I am the author of a book called How to Stop Smoking Without Killing Anyone. I smoked the cigarettes for f uh, 15 years, couldn't figure out a way to quit. Tried many, many, many times. Tried everything, patch, gum. Uh, hypnotism. I actually got into a discussion about that on Facebook over the weekend. Um, don't really believe in it. Didn't do anything for me. Uh, except I got a nap. Uh, what else? So my job, my goal, was when I found a way to stop but not quit, like, hey, I'm on to something. So I explored that, found a way to stop, haven't had a cigarette since 2002, May, okay? So my method works because I'm living proof. And I want to share it with you. You go to www.stopdon'tquit.com for more information about that book. Um, you can also email me or tweet out to me where you're at in your uh, process to kick the habit before you, the habit leads you kicking the bucket. And I'm happy to help any way I can. Third thing on me, I'm the founder of a hashtag called Rich Man's Gym. Rich Man's Gym is about home-based strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. Now, I am working on my second book, which is going to be all about that home-based strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. It will be called Rich Man's Gym. It's going to be loaded up with some philosophy, mindset, a bunch of workouts, and uh, some workout paths that you can take, routines that you can follow, and um, I'm looking forward to that. There's a blog, richmansgym.com, if you want to get some information on that and see some of the workouts I got already. But let's just get into today, okay? This is 100, episode 110, and we are looking at the only way to increase customer satisfaction. Now, usually on Mondays when I do the Nooner, I like to go back and review Grant's strategy of the week. Now, there's a whole chapter in this book, the 10X Rule, on this very thing. It's going to be chapter... Nineteen, customer satisfaction is the wrong target. It's on page one thirty-five. So if you have the book, this might be a good thing to go back and review. What is your thoughts on customer satisfaction? How important is it in the marketplace? 
Is it vital? Is it uh, a must-have? Is it not really all that worthy or worthwhile? Bill wants to ask a question. Bill says, I would like to ask a question. Why do you use Meerkat and not Periscope or both? Two phones at the same time, just asking. Okay. Um, you know, Bill, it's a good question. I've really, I've thought about trying to incorporate uh, Periscope into this thing. I feel like I've got a following on Meerkat. I've got a uh, group there and I'm putting my attention on Meerkat first and then I'll probably bring Periscope into the mix uh, a little bit down the road. What's your thoughts on Periscope versus Meerkat? In fact, if anybody else is on here, um, would love to hear that from you as well. So. The question that Grant poses on his stream is the only way to increase customer satisfaction, it's, it's how to increase customer satisfaction. It's something that we're all thinking about, right? It makes sense. You want your customers to be happy if you're in business, right? You want them to be happy. Um, Grant says, as a business owner or an entrepreneur, here's the question, are you more worried about existing customer satisfaction or non-customer satisfaction meaning what makes more sense who do you want to be the most satisfied the guy that you have already sold or the person that you have not yet to sell it's an interesting question right so the non-customer satisfaction would be the person that um, they're dissatisfied because they don't have your product yet for one um, and they may not even know they're unhappy because that's your job as a salesperson. So customer satisfaction versus customer acquisition, what's more important? Because that's what that's all about, the non-customer satisfaction. Because if they don't have your product, they don't have your service, they can't be satisfied. So that's the question. What's more important, customer satisfaction or customer acquisition? That's the, the that's what Grant is posing in chapter 19. That is what Grant is posing in his strategy last week. So many companies, here's this is what Grant says, go on to create what's known as a brand promise. It's something that, that would represent the company, like what they stand for, what they believe in, what's important to them, their values, right? Um, the things that make it unique. But there's a Gallup poll Okay, that says only half of the almost 18 million customers surveyed in this Gallup poll. Now, Gallup's huge if you haven't heard of them. Um, strongly believe that the companies they do business with always deliver on what they promise. Okay, 18 million customers surveyed strongly believe that the companies that the companies they do business with always deliver on what they promise. Only half. That means that half of your customers aren't getting what you promised, or at least that's their perception. And quite frankly, when it comes to satisfied or not satisfied, it's all about perception. It has nothing to do with actuality. So an overused and abused promise is the idea that companies will often throw out about customer satisfaction. The problem is, as Grant observes, is that real customer satisfaction doesn't exist or can't exist unless you have the customer. You got to have the customer first. So Bill says here, yeah, page 136, over promise. Well, you want to be over, what you're saying here, Bill, over deliver and under promise and customers should be more satisfied. Okay. Well, what we typically teach, did you read that right? Let's look at one, page 136. Okay, I have to go back and look at that, but typically we teach to overpromise and overdeliver. So, in for example, in Grant's office, and I was just there at the end of January. Grant, we don't really talk about uh, customer satisfaction. It's really all about customer acquisition. Okay, we spend a lot of time talking about how to get more customers. Now, the reason is that because attracting customers to the program. 
Oh, you're paraphrasing. Okay, I get it, Bill. Okay, Bill's paraphrasing. All right, so um, the only way to increase customer satisfaction is to increase customers. It's such a simple concept, but when you think about it, you're like, oh, yeah, just go get more. Because what happens when you get more? There's more people that are happy. And in order to get more, if you're following our teachings, service is senior to selling. And you service somebody all the way through from the beginning, from the moment you say, hey, my name is, and you introduce yourself, you got to treat them like a customer, treat them like a buyer, treat them like they can buy and they will buy. When you start doing those things and you make them habits and rituals, then the service, you're servicing them all the way to the sale and you're going to continue to service them afterwards. Okay, so you just got to go out and get more. You got to expand into this thing. And if you need help with that, that's a really good problem because that means you've expanded to a level that you can't keep up with. You got to go get some more help. Right? So, acquisition. Grant says increasing customer satisfaction is impossible without increasing customers. Grant's more worried about the non customer satisfaction than customer satisfaction. Okay, because everybody knows that this is this is what I'm saying. Here's the point I'm making. Everyone knows that customers have to be satisfied and happy in order for them to return and give positive word of mouth. Okay, so that means you have to be on it. So the whole customer satisfaction thing kind of is moot. Does that make follow? Grant advises you to make your primary focus commanding attention and generating customers before you worry about making them happy. A customer getting the package a day late is an issue should be handled. Yes, it's an issue should be handled. But the client who never buys your product suggests that you have a real serious customer sat a real serious customer satisfaction problem because you never made that person a customer. Is that making sense? Right? So I'll just read it again. He says a customer getting the package a day late is an issue and it should be handled. So whatever little uh, a faux pas happening in your company that resulted in a dissatisfied existing client that is important should be handled and addressed obviously okay but however and also in addition to the client who never buys the product should be considered a bigger problem when you agree <laughs> Problems are opportunities. So if somebody doesn't buy, that suggests a bigger problem with satisfaction because they weren't happy enough with the initial experience to justify making the investment or entering into the exchange with you by giving you their money for your product or your service. So when you think about it that way, it kind of, I, I think it's very empowering. First time I read that chapter, I'm like, okay, he's finally flipped his lid. Because in a lot of the industries, especially the ones that we've worked in in the industry I was in, if you look at automotive, um, you look at electronics, especially some of the big box stores or, or department stores, and they're so freaked out about customer satisfaction. Let me just use Macy's for an example. I'm just going to call them out. Okay, There's a store down here in my local town that I've gone to twice to purchase a suit, credit card fully locked and loaded and ready to blow, okay? Took me 45 minutes to be acknowledged, acknowledged, okay? I went to another one in the next, in another town over, okay? I was in the store literally less than 30 seconds and like, hey, welcome to Macy's. Hey, thanks for coming in. Can I point you in, in a direction? Well, are, you, are you looking for, for the men's section or are you shopping for somebody special? I mean, I was in there 30 seconds or less. I got bombarded. Which one did I feel more welcome in? Which one did I drop money in? Okay, the one that I didn't get acknowledged, I blew a gift card because it was burning a hole in my wallet. Okay? And I didn't use my credit card. The other one, didn't have a gift card, dropped some money, bought me a new suit. Nice. Okay? So that's the point. Now, so let's look at your sales process and how to incorporate this into the whole thing. Because in order for you to get a customer, in order for you to attain a customer that you can then be, that you can satisfy, and in order to satisfy an unsold customer, there is one key element 
that you got to maintain, that you got to work on, that you got to have. Okay, it's a key ingredient to a to a happy, satisfied customer. You know what it is? Take a guess. It's follow up. Okay. This brings me right back to my shopping experience of recently. Hey, Laura, thank you for being here. Follow-up is so important. So I went shopping for uh, my wife and I. Our wedding anniversary was on the 21st, 12 years together in a row. That's important. So I go out shopping for her, and I went into a store. I, I can't. I, I still may do this, and I don't want to ruin the surprise for her. But I went into a store and I saw something that I really liked, but it was some money. Okay, it's gonna be a stretch. And the sales girl behind the counter was fantastic. She was terrific. Okay, she asked me. She, she greeted me went right into figuring out what was important to me, what I liked, what I didn't like. She showed me some suggestions. She moved me through a couple different price points. We landed on something. Um, I was really close to pulling a trigger. But it, again, it was more than I thought I could make sense of in my mind, and I needed some time to digest. She asked for the business a few times. Still needed some time to digest. Look. 3% of every, uh, if you take a thousand people, 3% are market ready. Um, then there's like six or seven are really close. Uh, and then there's this other group, like 30% that probably going to need some time. I'm in that 30% right now on this purchase. Okay. Probably. And she moved me into the five or six. Could she have shut me down? Yes. But she didn't push hard enough. She didn't ask enough times and she let me go. Am I still in the market? Yes. Have I heard from her since? No. Did we exchange data? Yes. Okay. Follow-up is very, 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 very important. 80% of all transactions happen somewhere between the 5th and 12th. Follow-up. Okay. So if it's not so much customer satisfaction, but customer acquisition, that's the most important thing, and only 3% are ready to lay down at any given time, and 30% are going to need some help. Okay, if you're not following up, you can't make them happy. You can't get them using your product or your service. And you're going to be missing 97% of the opportunity in the market. Sooner or later... I'm going to do, I'm going to make this purchase. This, it will happen. Promise you that, okay? Whoever follows me up, whoever sells me, is going to get the business. Because it is a big purchase and it scares me. Okay? So, it's going to require a salesperson. Sooner or later, that's the point though. Everybody does it. Everybody buys, okay? I was in automotive for 10 years, okay? Sooner or later, this guy's going to buy a car, okay? Sooner or later, this guy's going to join a gym. Sooner or later, they are going to get healthy. It's going to happen. The thing is, is that when it does, when they, trans when they move through these different percentages of, of, of buyer readiness, when they get to this 3% place, you want to be the one they think of first. In fact, you want to be in such a place that everybody else has dropped off because you're the only one that's followed up. Now, the only way to do that is to get really, really good at follow-up. you got to be interesting. you got to stay interested. you got to be creative. If it takes 5 to 12, then you need at least 15 bullets in your gun. At least. Every contact you make is more valuable than one sale. Okay. I had a guy reach out to me based on a video I did. I never sold this guy anything, but the guy sent me two referrals. Why? Because I followed him up. So every contact is more valuable than one sale. Follow-up is key. 
sooner or later this guy's going to go. Now, hold on, we got to go to music. What were the points that we made today? Okay, number one, client acquisition is more important than customer satisfaction. It's just logical. You got to have a customer before you can satisfy them. Is that a new thought for you? Did you ever think about it that way? I know I hadn't until I read it, and then you're like, oh, yeah. Could have had a V8. Okay. Two, getting more clients is going to require that you get dialed in in your skill to follow up. Would you like some help with that? Because if you do, if the answer is, yeah, Dave, I'd love some help with that, I want you to give me a call. My phone number is 310-777-0352. You can email me if you'd rather, david at grantcardone.com. And I'm going to pull it, put a tool in front of you that will enable you to follow up with a client for a year. How'd you like enough ammunition to stay in front of somebody for, for, for 12 months? Think you'll get more deals that way? Absolutely. Okay. In addition to that, there's 130 segments I'm going to put in front of you that you can train on to understand, follow up, and then build roadmaps for customers that you've sold and have not sold. That's some money right there. 310-777-0352, david at grantcardone.com. If I can be of service to you in any way, shape, or form, feel free to reach out to me. Maybe follow-up's not your deal. Maybe you're struggling with closing or prospecting or the road to the sale or something. Either way, my job is to help. Thank you for being here today on The Nooner. Have a great week. Hey, there's only one day. This is, it's an extra day. I almost forgot that piece of the puzzle. It's February 29th. You got an extra day to make the most out of February. Do it. See you guys tomorrow.